Hello and welcome to this edition of Velocity Kinetics. We are outside, I'm on my lunch break at work. I've been given quite a long one today because I'm in the middle of doing some training for something. Um, you'll have seen the most recent video that go, that's gone out about the changes to F1 going to a success-based handicap system. Um, now, I mentioned that I might have lost some footage and I am still, as I say, sorting out. The other thing is you might notice the quality in the video is varying because I've got, as I mentioned in the video a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago, I've got a new phone so I'm trying to get the best settings out of that. I've got a new webcam which I bought tail end of last year and still trying to find the right settings with that. Sometimes I'll burn the name on to the video, sometimes I won't. So there is a little bit of trial and error going on at the moment. What we're going to discuss just while Sarah is waiting in Aldi, just going to quickly go through a we answer. Um, and we answer what is throttle control? Now, throttle control is something essentially you do it all the time but in many ways it's a lost art form now throttle control is something you do so for instance you decide how quickly you're going to accelerate how quickly you're going to decelerate if you're going to be lifting off and how much power you need to put on to keep the power linear or just enough to make your turbo come on and so on and so forth so in that aspect you're always doing throttle control so why why might it be a lost art well, you could maybe just argue that most people these days just apply throttle, they don't control it. With a lot of the way people drive these days, they treat the throttle like an on-off switch. So, accelerating hard power down, decelerating hard on the brakes, that's pretty much it. Whereas, if you're doing things correctly, you can actually do a lot of things just with the throttle in many ways if you're using regenerative braking that kind of is throttle control because you're just lifting off and applying less power to do the same thing throttle will be a kind of dying art to a point in the traditional sense because if we all go electric like we're planning you manage the throttle in a completely different way to you do in your petrol and your diesel cars if you want a lesson in throttle control you watch some of the old masters um, in Formula 1, so you watch the likes of Jackie Stewart, you watch the likes of Ayet and Senna, Alain Prost. If there's enough footage around, you try and watch some, some of Ascari or Fangio. You can, can use the, you can do what they call balancing the car on the throttle, which I've done a few times myself when I, when I was visiting my friend Mike when he used to live in a village in the back of beyond, and the roads there were always really fun to drive on. So, when you balance the car on the throttle, what that means is you've gone from being at the throttle level you want, so full throttle, and then you've gone to just putting enough on to keep the keep your speed progressive. Say, for instance, if there's a corner that you want to take third gear 40 miles an hour, for example, which isn't a, a completely insane speed to, uh, to do, um, assuming the corner can cope with 40 miles an hour, and you have the skill to do that. That's obviously, that's obviously priority number one. As you approach the corner, whilst you can lift off, you'll obviously lose speed through the corner. And as you lose the speed, the car might become unsettled. If you put full power down, depending on what sort of drive you've got, you might understeer wide with a front wheel drive, you might oversteer and complete spin if you're in a rear wheel drive, or you might just have a horrible unknown if you're in an all wheel drive. And then likewise, if you lift off, you might have lift off oversteer or lift off understeer. But if you balance the car on the throttle, that's you keeping power down to uh, to help get the car through the corner. So I'm just going to I'm in just sat in the car in the Aldi car park at the moment. But I'm going to just try and see if I can do this without attracting too much attention. Try and give a practical demonstration. In an ideal world, if we weren't in lockdown, this practical demonstration would be done on some lovely country roads with a full thrash drive. Not with a Bon Jovi because that's copyright. But it's fire up. I don't have a neutral switch on the Bellino. So I don't know how loud this is going to be. So the car's just idling at the moment. I'm in neutral. I'm not putting it in gear because we can do this demonstration without gearing up. So 
can hear the throttle picking up. That might be about where you sort of normally run your throttle on average. Sort of fifth, sixth gear. That's probably what it sounds like from the outside as you're travelling along. So I've just come off the throttle just so I don't, because I've not got any movement going on, I don't want to overheat the engine. Now sometimes you can do what they call a blip on the throttle, which is part of the throttle. Um, managing the throttle um, on the way down, so you can blip it like that, on the way down, or louder. But a lot of people treat the throttle like it's just a, a loud pedal these days, so it's just a just a loud, just a loudness. But if you're balancing the car on the throttle, so for instance we come through that corner, you've rattled down your gears and then you keep it that sort of revs through your corner and there you go. So Sarah's back and we will um, we'll pick up the rest of this answer later on. Sorry about the delay in recording that. Um, that was done nearly two weeks ago and I've only just now really got around to editing because it's taken a while with what I've been doing at work to change. And I got a new hat, annoyingly bought, about an hour and a half before the news about Williams potentially going up for sale and the split from Rocket. Anyway, we're back on... So back onto that point about managing the throttle. What's coming up next is a demonstration through Forza Motorsport 7. Now, um, I, before actually before I go any further, I apologise. When I've watched the other video back, the, the bit that precedes this, somewhere when I turn the engine on, the video seems to have gone out of sync with the, with the audio. I do apologise about that. I can't fix that. I have to, I'd have to completely re-record. I haven't got the time. To completely re-record. So, um, hopefully you can still hear the point that's being being made. So, yes. So as I was saying, the point going forward after this is going to make this we answer a bit longer than a standard we answer video. But we are using Forza Motorsport Seven. Um, I obviously don't own any rights to Forza. I believe that is Turn Ten Studios. If I remember rightly, who own all the rights to it. It was recorded through the Xbox, um, downloaded via the Xbox Live Companion on Windows 10. The car I'm driving is a Ferrari 360 CS Challenge Stradale. Um, why the 360? I always quite like the 360, I also, I also quite like the 430. But I didn't feel like driving the Scuderia. I just felt like driving the 360 because I've been flying around in it a lot in, in its sequel game, Horizon 4. But that's beside the point. It's not a stock 360. The paint job is one I'd done myself um, about four years ago on a different port, which I imported to this one. The tuning on it, I don't think it's available on my on anything I've done on port. So if you want to search for my game tag Minardi Cosworth. And see if it's on there. If it is, that's fine. All it basically is, it's a full weight reduction. So everything that could be removed from the car has been removed weight-wise, including change of wheels to make the car lighter. Tires are wider. It's race tires. It's got front and rear splitter. So front splitter, rear wing um, for the downforce. And I believe I have changed the camshaft to give more uh, power. But that's pretty much it. The track we're racing on is Watkins Glen, which you'll see during the uh, during the introduction, um, as the video starts. Um, so I will do a little bit of overdubbing from here, and um, we'll see if this answers the question for you. Go to race. Track loading. Here, black. So we're doing, as I mentioned, we're doing a few laps around Watkins Glen. So we're just going to let the car get to where it should be. I apologise if you can hear noise in the background. It's just my washing machine going absolutely crazy. Um, so this is just me getting to the corner I want to use. Now the corner I've chosen to use 
is the final corner at Watkins Glen coming back onto the start finish straight. The reason I've chosen it, it's a 90 degree corner and should demonstrate what I'm wanting to demonstrate quite well. I do eventually find during the recording where the telemetry button was. Now in Forza editions of old, so I think even in Forza 6 it was in this position, certainly Forza 2, Forza 3, Forza 4, you just needed to press up on the D-pad and you would then get your telemetry and you can jump across to see spring rates, you could jump across to see steering input, your throttle input, your brake temperature, tyre wear and so on and so forth. I think I did eventually find it was down on the D-pad on this one. So, as I mentioned already, this is a Ferrari 360 uh, Challenge Stradale. Painted in red, because if you've got a Ferrari it's got to be red. Now I leave the braking line on, because sometimes with where my TV is in my living room I haven't got the greatest of positions to see it from so I need something to tell me when I'm meant to break. I'm still an original edition Xbox One when I'm doing this so I'm just trying to build up a bit of speed to get to this first corner. Now I believe on this for this occasion I do a heavy break rather than balancing the car on the throttle. So we're coming up to the corner I can see where I need to break and then just do a heavy heavy braking and then start turning the car in. Now that's not a very quick way of getting the car through the corner. As you can see it's taken a lot longer just visually. It could have been done so much faster. Not sure why I decided to pause. I think I just need to check and see if I was actually recording. Um, right, so we come around and do it again. Um, now let's have a look. I might inadvertently do what I was wanting to do. There we go, I found, the, uh, found what I was looking for. So you can see what horsepower I'm producing, what speed, what revs, what percentage of throttle I'm using. I would prefer to race with manual on this game, but I haven't got a decent steering wheel set up. My friend Mikey and I, back in 2010, we built an was it 2009? Hill could be able to correct me, but I think it was 2009 stroke 10. We built what we called the Forza table, the house we lived in. Now, this corner I've inadvertently just done what I was trying to do actually. I was just to balance the car on the front, we got around it nice and quick. Um, still managed to get the apex of the corner. But anyway, back to what I was saying just before we get to that corner, we built something called the Forza table. I had some Jaguar XJ6 chairs that I bought for a top gear living room. We then built a box for the chair to sit on, and then we built a table to put the telly on and mount the force feedback steering wheel that he had. And it created such an immersive experience. Um, we played a lot of Formula 1 2010 on it. Uh, it was the year with the... With the, uh, with the not DRS, trying to think what it's called. The F-Duct. The year of the F-Duct. Um, so we played a lot of that, but we played, played with the steering wheel so much it was boring to play with the controllers afterwards. So here we are, we're starting to work our way back to the corner that we want. So swing it wide, maybe a little too wide, got a little bit greedy on the throttle on the way out. So you see my throttle position, now we're going back to zero throttle, on the brakes, back on the throttle. Uh, go wide a bit and then we start swinging it back around to the left, we do a tiny bit of braking and then we put balance a little bit of power out and we can get through the corner much quicker. So this is where we balance the car on the what I mean by balancing the car on the throttle. You find the right amount of throttle you can use to get the car through the corner without completely lifting off. If you can, avoid it. I believe we do the same again on this corner. I have no idea whether in real life this corner can actually be done flat. But um, we do it. I can do it flat in the car I'm using. Balance it a little bit on the throttle there just to back it off and get the car to turn in. Um, Oh, that's someone messaging me on Facebook. I thought everything had gone nice and quiet, but obviously not. Um, hopefully we can minimise those sort of interruptions for the rest of this. Now, I did about five laps in total, so I can't remember what I did on this one, because I did write down what piece of paper on a piece of paper what I had done lap-wise, 
and when I had to tidy up, get rid of confidential waste uh, from doing my work from home, um, I put it through the shredder, which was not a smart move, but at least the confidential waste has been destroyed, so give it one, take it the other. Um, I believe this time I go full, I try and carry maximum power through the corner, um, if I remember rightly, on, the, on this one. Um, I quite like racing this track on Forza to be honest, because it's got a good mix of, of high power straights where you need uh, some top speed and you also need some good acceleration out of the, out of the corners. Um, Sarah likes racing this track quite a lot as well uh, when we play uh, play Forza, it's quite interesting, this looks really nice when it's uh, split uh, on single screen, but when it becomes split screen it tends to, tends to crap to her uh, to be honest. Um, right, and I apologise if the video quality keeps do dropping, it was recorded through Xbox's capture feature, so let's have a look, so what do we do here, so that's just completely lifted off this time, so that was me going through, lift off now, whilst going through a corner completely lifted off on the throttle, is not a bad move in many ways, because you've got then the ability to put more power on if you lose too much speed, and you can also react to put some brake on should you uh, should you need it. It's also not fast if you're trying to get the car around the corner quickly. So again, we did a bit of balancing on the throttle here. I didn't know until I did I started doing this because I normally race with that full screen view. I didn't realise until I was messing around just to try and see what views would be the best for you guys to see. I didn't realise the rear wing actually bobbles around on the uh, on the game. Um. Oh, got a little hot and heavy getting into that corner. Um, I think I was a bit late on the uh, on the uh, on the brakes there. Um, also, driving in third person, I don't get an awful lot of. Um, I don't do it very often, so you have to sort of re-reference all your all your braking points. Um, this isn't an example of how to do this properly. It's just how I went about. Uh, doing it. What am I doing? Good question. I'd have to go back and ask past me what I was doing there. If I remember rightly, I recorded this at about 11 o'clock at night, having had a bottle of Corona, so I was not in the uh, freshest of frames of mind, should we say. So here we go, we're coming back around to that corner. Now one thing, it, whilst um, you can't really see it on, on a Forza game, what you also need to do whenever you're doing any braking like this, if you watch, I, ne I hardly ever hit 100% braking. Um, actually, let's just see what we do here. So that was me trying to do full power, that, that's what I was doing, that one was full power through the corner. So you did your braking and you just thought you could accelerate through and then naturally you've damaged the front end of the uh, of the car. But what you need to do in any game like this, you need to treat the car, the, uh, treat the throttle and the brake like it's got an egg underneath it. You need to squeeze the throttle and I believe this is the end of uh, the recording. Yes it is, yeah. So that was how you do it. So, we, so you see it was the second lap, how we get around the corner, you balance throttle balance the car on the throttle you um you just put on enough throttle to get through the corner quickly without needing to hit the brakes mid corner and without massively overpowering so how what is throttle control throttle control aside from the standard inputs between full power and no power on a on any um corner it's also about how you get through the corner itself and doing things like balancing the car on the throttle, so finding the right amount of revs to get the car through the corner, optimizing speed and engine power. Um, so that's the end of this edition of We Answer. We hope you enjoyed this one, and we will see you in the next one.